What is up guys, it is Marcus from Perspective Sports and today we're going to discuss a very exciting weekend in college football. We saw the Kansas Jayhawks defeat Rutgers 55-14, to improving to 2-1 on the season and have now outscored their last two opponents by a combined score of 86-21. to Rock Chalk Jayhawk. North Texas traveled to Arkansas and obliterated them 44-17. to BYU went on the road to upset number 6 Wisconsin 24 to 21 after a missed game time field goal attempt, ending their 41 game non conference home winning streak. In number 12, LSU defeated number 7 Auburn on a close game winning field goal, 22 to 21. And that's not even all that happened this week. That's how good of a week this was. But before we continue, I'm going to make a video like this and have it out every Monday where we'll go through one to three topics that I, you know, decided to go in. To rather to go into detail on what do the AP's rankings, my rankings, game of the week, and potential upset of the week. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. And we're only gonna have one topic to go into depth on this week, but it's a very important topic to me, and that's the fact that group of fives have absolutely no chance at competing for the ultimate prize in this current system, no matter what. I was watching the Boise State Oklahoma State game. I am a Boise State fan. And they got absolutely dominated by Oklahoma State, 44-21, to on an absolutely atrocious day by the special teams. But that's not, we'll talk about that later in the video. But during the game, I heard a commentator say something that we all already knew. And to sum it up, he basically said, no matter the outcome of this game, Boise State has no chance of making the college football playoff under the current structure. And if Boise State has no chance, no other group of five team has a chance because no other group of five team schedules like Boise State. Just go back and look at Boise State's schedule. Georgia, Ole Miss, they've played the big dogs. They go play the Pac-12 regularly. Oregon is the familiar face on the schedule. Oregon State was a familiar face on the schedule. They've played Arizona State. They've played Oklahoma State this year. They'll play Florida State next year and the year after, and then play Oklahoma State again. They'll play Michigan State and Oregon State in 2022. And no matter how many good teams they schedule and beat, it means nothing in terms of being able to compete for the ultimate prize. And when you look at UCF, my only knock was they didn't they didn't play the toughest schedule last year, so I don't think they earned the right to be in. Yeah, they deserved it, but they didn't I don't believe they earned the right to be in. And even if they played Auburn in season and beat them the way they beat them in the bowl game, I don't think it would have mattered. UCF has added Louisville to the schedule in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. They played North Carolina regularly. I don't think it matters. Even if they, it doesn't, if they beat these teams handily, let's say Louisville has a really good season, but they lose to UCF, it doesn't matter for UCF because they're not in a Power 5 conference. And I think it needs to be reformed. I think it needs to be changed. And that's <laughs> that was just more me venting as the, the, the topic of the day. So now let's move on to the AP rankings where they had Alabama number one. Georgia moves up one spot to number two. Clemson moves back one spot to number three. Ohio State at four. Oklahoma at five. LSU jumps six spots to six. Stanford jumps two spots to seven. Notre Dame at eight. Auburn moves back two spots to nine. Penn State and Washington are now tied at 10. Penn State moves up one spot. West Virginia moves up two spots to 12. Virginia Tech at 13. Mississippi State moves up two spots to 14. Oklahoma State moves up nine spots to 15. UCF moves up two spots to 16. TCU moves back two spots to 17. Wisconsin moves back 12 spots to 18. Michigan 19, Oregon 20. Miami 21. Texas A&M jumps into the rankings at 22. Boston College makes their appearance at 23. Michigan State moves up one spot to 24. And BYU cracks the rankings at 25. Boise State fell out. USC fell out. And Arizona State fell out. And now let's take a look at my top 25. Alabama at 1, Georgia at 2, Clemson at 3, Ohio State moves up 1 spot to 4, Oklahoma moves up 1 spot to 5, LSU moves up 5 spots to 6, Stanford moves up 2 spots to 7, Auburn moves back 1 spot to 8. I can't penalize Auburn for losing to LSU. Well, I'm penalizing them by moving back, but if you lose to a good team, I'm not going to cripple you. I'm not going to I'm not going to bash you. It happens when good teams play, someone has to lose. Now, don't get embarrassed. If you play a good game like Auburn did, losing a game-winning field goal, you got to move back, but you're not going to move that far back. Penn State jumps six spots to number nine. Washington comes in at number 10. Virginia Tech moves up one spot to 11. West Virginia moves up one spot to 12. Wisconsin moves back nine spots to 13. Notre Dame moves back six spots to 14. And I had to move Notre Dame back. They leave much to be desired when you watch them play. Yes, they played Michigan good. They won that game. But at home against Ball State and Vanderbilt, 
I don't, I don't, that doesn't look like a top 10 team to me, and I can't reward you. You won, yes, but you're not playing like a top 10 team, so as a result, I have to move you back. Mississippi State jumps two spots to 15. UCF jumps two spots to 16. Oklahoma State jumps eight spots to 17. TCU moves back four spots to 18. Michigan at 19, working up one spot at 20. Miami down one spot to 21. BYU jumps into the rankings at number 22. Texas A&M jumps into the rankings at number 23. Michigan State at 24, and Boise State moves back nine spots to number 25, barely hanging on. That was awful football that I witnessed out of the Broncos, especially on special teams. That's usually their strong suit. They couldn't get off punts. They had two of them blocked. But at the end of the day, they're still a very good veteran unit, and I expect them to bounce back. In the end of the video, let's get into our game of the week. And our potential upset of the week, let's start with the game of the week, and that is number 22 Texas A&M opening up their conference play by traveling to number one in the country, Alabama, who just finished whooping up on Ole Miss 62-7, to and this would be a really good game in my opinion. A&M's only loss came at the hands of number three Clemson on the road by two. This is a legitimate team, and here's their chance to prove it on the road against Alabama, and let's take a look at each team. A&M's offense puts up 515 yards per game versus Alabama's 545. And we all know both of these teams are going to put up big yards, so I didn't bother putting the defensive yards per game allowed in the graphic. But if you're curious, Alabama ranks 15th, allowing 306 yards per game, and A&M ranks 48th, allowing 370.5 per game. But what it came down to to me was Alabama allows 9.3 points per game. Looks a lot like the Patriots. Give up a lot of yards, not a lot of points. And Texas A&M... It's pretty much the same system. They rank 33rd, but at the end of the day, they're allowing 19 points a game. Both of these defenses are very good. And this game is going to come down to something that you wouldn't expect it to. It's going to come down to which team commits the least amount of penalties. Despite Texas and them only committing five penalties per game, where they rank 23rd, they give up 43.5 penalty yards per game. And Alabama commits an average of 7.3 penalties per game and gives up an astounding 68.7 yards per game. Both defensive coordinators know they cannot spot the other team's offense yardage because that will be the death of you. And I think the defense that plays the most discipline will come out victorious. Now, for the potential upset of the week, and that's number eight Notre Dame traveling to Wake Forest. And there's a lot of potential upsets this week. You have Iowa over Wisconsin, Texas over TCU, Indiana over Michigan State. But I think this one's the most likely to happen. Because Notre Dame, they don't look like a good football team right now. As previously stated, they struggled at home versus Ball State and Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt left points on the, on the field. Let, let's not get it twisted. They left points on the field. Nonetheless, they lost the game. Go back and rewatch it. Vanderbilt left points on the field. And now they're going to have their first road game of the season against a team fresh off a loss against number 23 Boston College. Wake Forest's offense is the real deal. They're 13th in yards per game, putting up 530. And it's a balanced offense. They get 296 of those yards through the air, ranking 32nd, and 234 on the ground, ranking 24th. And unless Notre Dame comes to play like they did in week one, they're going to be on upset alert in North Carolina. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about my rankings, game of the week, upset of the week. Look forward to reading your comments below. See you there.